So this is one of those digital art practices that showcases a lot of your own taste and personality because it's pretty straightforward digital inking. You have to get into this kind of Zen state and you just, you find your line, you decide how much detail is enough detail. Kind of just breathe in and out. Find your shapes. Yep. And then it, when you want to correct something, I recommend just using your lasso, cutting it off, deleting, and then going back to your brush and restating the line. Because sometimes you don't want to redo the whole line over that you just did. And then one line just flows into the next. Now there are some tools that are helpful. So down by the magnifying glass is the hand tool. And you'll see under the hand tool, which we use all the time, uh, the hand tool on its own, just when you hold down spacebar, you're using the hand tool to kind of move around when you're zoomed in. But if you're having trouble with a certain curve, like this is a really tough curve to do, either direction, the under curve. So I can use the hand tool and change it to what's called the rotate view. And then I can use the hand tool to actually tilt my canvas. So it's a, a more comfortable curve to make with my tablet. Just like if I was inking by hand, I would rotate the drawing board. So you have those options as well. And then you can just double click it to get it back to original. That's one advantage of inking in a raster program is you can always rotate the canvas. That's something Procreate has as well. Which I've always found kind of weird since on an iPad you can always just rotate the iPad too. But you um if you like have clothes on it, yeah. Generally, yes. Yeah, you would do kind of the, the basic shapes of the anatomy. Okay. And then you would think of that as like a clothes hanger, right? So the points where the anatomy juts out, like maybe the sides of the rib cage, the edges of the shoulders, that's where the clothes would hang from. And that's generally true for any accessories you're drawing as well. So if you're drawing a monster with glasses, don't draw the glasses first. Draw the, the creature's head and then the glasses on top of that. Okay, I'm getting into a little bit of trouble here. This is what's called a tangency. So lots of things are touching kind of uncomfortably in one area. So I'm just going to take my lasso. I'm just going to cut all of that out and find a new solution. I could fix this as a vector later as well, but I could want to try it here. And how do you fix it? You just make stronger decisions where the overlaps are are more clear. Things aren't touching in an uncomfortable way. I might just do this. You can always thicken a line and then cut it off. Remember all these raster programs are. Photoshop, Photop is giving you control. Oh, I hate that. I had a, a feather turned on for my lasso, and I don't want that for this. So I want it really clean. But all of these programs, they just give you control of every pixel, right? 
So you can use any techniques you've learned so far that you understand about how to make it better. So this is why I I try not to get into two other too many other tools other than just the brush tool. Because once you start cutting away and using the eraser and stuff, it really can complicate your line. But every once in a while, that's what's needed. And the reason I'm outlining some of these highlights is just so it really clearly uh, separates from the clothing underneath. And if it starts to lag on you, mine's going pretty slow here. So I'm finished with this line. I'm going to save. So just Command S. Make sure you know where it's saving. It's saving right here. I'm going to move that into this folder. I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to open it again from my folder. And that will clear your memory cache, so it should work a little smoother. Also, if there's any any uh, tabs you have open you don't need open, it's good to close those down. And ultimately, it's good to kind of restart your computer if you're getting a lot of lag in Photopea. Because we're working at pretty high resolution here, even though we're just using limited color. But then you'll see that your pen tool starts to work a little bit better. It's like unclogging it. Now the one thing I definitely enjoy about digital inking compared to inking by hand, which I've done a lot as an editorial cartoonist, is that your pen doesn't dry out. <laughs> so you don't get, you always get perfectly clean and even lines. You're never going to smear it with your hand while the ink is drying. You don't have to use whiteout. It gives you full control of everything. I'm going to use that hand rotate tool so I can get a better angle on this kind of teardrop shape. And sometimes the angle of it can make inking the curve just, it can make all the difference. Oh, I love that smoothing tool, that smoothing setting on the brush. So satisfying. Let's see for those long curves. Now, some of you might not have a clean kind of line style. That's not what you want. You can just make it really choppy and messy as long as it's black lines. That still works for spot illustration. It won't work so well for production animation, but maybe you're more the independent animator. Make every frame yourself. Be as ambitious as you want.
You know, the morning class was like this too. We got really quiet once we were into the inking. And save your progress as you go. And make sure you know where it's saving to. All right, now little things. This often happens with inking, both traditional and digital. You'll overshoot, and you'll get little blobs at the end. So you can clean that up with a lasso with no feather. But we can also clean that up when we turn it into a vector. So whatever works for you. But I kind of like the efficiency of the lasso. And you don't need to be obsessive about it. Though I tend to be. Whenever you want to see just what you've got so far, just turn off the eyeball on your sketch. So those are my clean lines so far. And that almost just makes a spot illustration in and of itself, right? I would just need to kind of contain the top and contain the bottom. So I like to work out from the head and then I get to decide how ambitious I want to be with the time I have. Do the back foot here. Now this is the problem with the fixed line weight for animation. Like these little back toenails need to be outlined with the same line, same line weight as the, the eyeballs in the head, right? But you still want to leave some space in between them so they don't just become all muddied together. A line above it. So I'm thinking this design is it's like a foot with nails coming out of it. It's kind of an animated thing. So it's just going to have two nails. Like this one in the back. Kind of like a hoof with two little nails. Okay, nice. Yep. And color. These aren't meant to just be coloring sheets. You know, color is going to finish these off. So whatever your weird ideas are, you'll get to make those a little bit more clear with color as well. I have lots of little fur kind of covering things up. Having worked on a few coloring book projects, coloring books are an interesting thing to do because since you're only using line art, you're just trying to vary a lot of texture because it's more fun to color a lot of different textures. So often it means like subdividing things into stripes and into shapes. So if it helps to think of this as a coloring book, then go for it. Now to show you what hatching and stippling might be like, they're just kind of texture additions that you can do. 